First of all, this is the 612 Ventus air cooler, and I want to get a close up here on the marketing language. It's super conductive. That's right, and it's, it, there's not a space in there. They're saying it's super conductive. Let's just double check really quick. I need to refresh my basic knowledge of physics. A superconductor is a type of material that conducts electricity with a zero energy loss or resistance when cooled to a certain temperature. I don't, hey guys, I think you might need to change this. <laughs> it's, it's not, to be fair, one of those on the peripheral side, and I don't know what the other guy does, but it's not this. So, so it's not their fault. But maybe, maybe we'll, we'll get back to the cooling team. These are concept cases, and they're made in collaboration with ASUS, which means hopefully you never need support. And if you do, you go to Cooler Master, because otherwise I'm getting uh, drowned out by noise because I'm talking poorly about ASUS. The way this one works, though, so this is a lock back here, and this actually is just a bar. We've got great shots that goes in and hooks. And so it, it turns like a key, pops out, releases the GPU, and the whole point of these concepts, which these are not in mass production, these are basically prototypes, uh, is to display the GPU, both of them. So that's how that one works. It uses the BTF connection here, which ASUS showed last year. Only one of them melted on a show PC. And then this one is another concept case, which is also ITX and is another GPU showcase. So you can see kind of integrated for showing the video card itself uh, as it is the most expensive component in the system. So this is kind of integrating the video card into the ITX case. It's got, got a 280 up here. This might look kind of familiar to you all. This is an NR200P, but it's been heavily modified, clearly. Uh, so a lot of people like that case. Before that, this video is brought to you by Thermal Grizzly's Aeronaut and Hydronaut Thermal Pastes. Aeronaut is Thermal Grizzly's entry-level thermal solution, marketed as resistant to curing and for long-term endurance. Hydronaut is Thermal Grizzly's next step up, targeted for overclocking and higher performance applications. We've used Hydronaut on a lot of our systems internally over the years. You can learn more at the link in the description below. Okay, so as we start with the cases, we might look at a few coolers at the end of this too. Uh, they have a ton of stuff here. So Encore 600 has two models. They call them Prestige and then Standard. Currently, this is not final, so it's got this gold plastic basically up top. That's supposed to be replaced with aluminum later. They're gonna do some kind of coloring on the aluminum once they replace it. But this is the concept. The Prestige model, primary differences are it ships with three panels. So there's gonna be two glass and then one mesh panel. You can actually see the mesh panel on their standard version of the case. Uh, glass is self-evident. But the general idea here is a large box to build stuff in with an aquarium style approach to it. There is an angled adapter to uh, install the fans at kind of that 15 or so degree angle. For the panels, they're symmetrical. So this panel and this panel, whether glass or mesh, can be swapped and the case is invertible as well. So this case, you can see the system is inverted. This one's a more standard with the vertical GPU. And uh, the first question I had was, how many screws to invert the case? Because the last time I inverted a case was actually with someone from Cooler Master at PAX, uh, and it took us two hours, and I don't know how many screws it was, but needless to say, I'm traumatized from it. So this one is four screws. Uh, plus two, so it's got four in the feet, they come out, it's got two more in one of the panels, and then you flip the whole thing and you can rearrange it. It's supposed to be a lot easier. Actually, Be Quiet has made similar improvements to its inversion process. So for the case is pricing, this is the one that's 210, this is 180. Again, the panels that are included are kind of the main difference. So it pops out and then up. Uh, that's the symmetrical glass panel. And then we can also pop this one out and up. And uh, that's kind of how it works. So it's so a release date for these, supposed to be sometime in quarter four. Now moving on to these. So Masterbox 500 has uh, this mesh front and then the Prisma is the glass showcase. The pricing at uh, 140 for this one, 120 for that one. They both included a 120 millimeter rear fan. That's ARGB and that's it for this one. And then the Matchbox 500 with the mesh front has three more 120s in the front. So this, I think, is probably going to be on our radar for uh, competition in that mid-range ATX market. We'll have to see how it does. 
Cooler Mash in the past, just for perspective, probably one of the better cases they made that we reviewed was the TD500. Did really well in testing. Um, unfortunately, I think that dropped right around a tariff increase. And so the product kind of fell off the radar after that because the pricing changed. So this might fill kind of part of that market. Um, key competition for this would be like the Fractal North, but there's a fan difference there. Uh, and then the North, you're going more for the looks. You know, this, you might get more of the kind of cheaper performance. Um, Corsair 4000D is still relevant as well. In that price range, you add some fans, and it'll be a key competitor to this. So we'll see how they do in the benchmarking. But anyway, this, so this front panel pulls off like this. The one thing I would like to see that I don't right now, and I don't know if this is going to change or not, but would be a pogo pin because they're using kind of the older style uh, cabling. Now, I don't know if the hot glue is maybe just because it's you know early uh, sample type thing. But uh, we, the pogo pins we love to see because it reduces the chance that the user is going to rip the wire out when they pull the front panel. Makes it cleaner. Inside the case, there are two 120 mounts on top of the power supply shroud. As usual, kind of unfortunately, this back mount's not going to do a whole lot because you've got a power supply right below it. You need at least an inch air gap to really overcome the, uh, the pressure requirements to push a meaningful amount of air up into the GPU. But there's two mounts there. You would probably want to put reverse fan uh, options down there instead of standard fans that are just flipped. And then we'll go ahead and remove this uh, back, this panel as well. I don't know if this is a, a pull or a, does this pull up? Oh, there it goes, okay. So uh, this needs to be ventilated like it is. Now, the porosity as a, another kind of critique is not that high here. So they've got a pattern going where they're trying to go with these larger holes down to smaller and then kind of medium. And one of the kind of downsides of the lower porosity, uh, the side vent for the lower quarter panel is that if you're going to do a power supply mounted fan, it's really not going to have many places to pull air because it needs to pull it from the sides. So it's not going to get it anywhere else. Obviously, you can't really pull through the bottom of the case. Um, so ventilation here is key if these are going to be useful. The reason for this panel design is that they have this, which you are supposed to be able to customize. Uh, currently, however, the option is basically the three classic XFX door hanger options which is sleeping, working, gaming, and frankly, I could save them a lot of money because that's the only one you need. So it's a free idea for Cooler Master. Uh, otherwise, though, this is it's new tooling, but it's shared between these two cases. Um, so there's, there's not any differences to really speak of here. These are the ASUS Collaboration BTF ones, and they're pretty interesting. So like I said, that's an NR200P. We'll come back to this. This one, however, is new, and the first question I had was really just about the support for the GPU. So let's take a look at this. The way this works is you've got the PCIe slot sticks out at the bottom. You can use that as a guide. These four posts also help guide it into place. And these two here are what the, there's a steel bar inside that hooks onto these. So that uh, key at the back of the case, it was it back here? I moved it towards me. So this kind of uh, turnkey is what actuates the bar, hooks the bottom. Now, I asked about weight support because you know, once this is actually socketed, where we're going to guide this PCIe slot into the hole here and then align with the four posts and the corners. Once I press down on this, the natural inclination, I think, for let me rotate this, a lot of people is going to be pick up um, the case by the GPU component. And so the concern I would just have is the weight capacity. I asked Cooler Master, they said at least 30 kilograms, which is enormous if that's the case of support, because then you could lift by this. I haven't locked it right now, and you'd have uh, you know more than enough support for a system. The question is just how well it actually works in reality. Now, one of the concerns I had with this is still time to re make revisions. We'll see if they do, is ventilation here, because this GPU, if they're designing to support cards like this Asus one, it's vertical uh, fin stack, which means the air is going to come out the top up here, and the air is going to come out of the bottom down here, where there's no way for it to come out. So, I, I mean, ultimately, the air will find its way out the top and the back, but you really want to just open that up because there's no reason to close it off. So some ventilation here would be great. They do have time to make that change. I don't know if they will. Uh, and then you'd also, just because we ejecting the air into a very tiny chamber. You would need either more ventilation in here, which pushes it into the motherboard compartment, or to cut some slats 
in here. So probably what I would try and do is give it some escape routes somewhere in this wall if structurally that's acceptable to let the air get out. So that's my only key critique of it right now. The motherboard has just enough room for a downdraft cooler. That's about it. They have a stock cooler on there now. It's going to pull through the mesh panel and the power supply is pulling through the same side. So pretty simple stuff. This PCB up here is providing the power to the GPU through the foot. So Cooler Master, in its effort to support other GPUs, was saying it basically wants to have a hole to pull the 12 volt high power, whatever the cable is, PCIe, 8 pin up through the hole, plug it into the GPU, so you don't necessarily need uh, the foot to do it if you don't have a BTF card, because there's really not going to be that many that are, that are selling They're in the kind of single digit thousands range. This one I'm actually going to start at the bottom of the case under the video card. So there's a PCIe riser in here. You can see there's a decent amount of space underneath. That's going to be your main kill management area if you were to buy one of these. Uh, and then this right here, this, this cable I'm pushing on, that's 12 volt high power. That's feeding into the PCB, which is going into the foot that is powering the GPU. So as a reminder, that's what they showed last year uh, where the, the 12 volt high power is not going in through the top. You know, thermally, it's kind of interesting because the card has the most possible access to cool air. It pulls it in externally. It has a little bit of space at the bottom to vent the air out. Uh, and then the rest of the air is going to come up and into the 280 millimeter liquid cooler that's feeding the CPU cramped back there. But otherwise, anyone who's built a 200, NR200P build is kind of familiar with this layout. So that's going to be for the cases. This cooler is $70. It's a dual fan air cooler. So I would keep this really simple today. But there's a magnet top cap comes off. The fin stack is central and then the two fans on either side is just a push pull. So one of them is a reverse fan. They have rails to guide up and down for clearance. And uh, that's about all we're going to really get into now. I mean, this type of thing, you know, we can, we'll just test it when we're ready with our cooler bench and you'll see how it does. But for heat pipes to a quick look. So these are six millimeter heat pipes. There are six of them. And then uh, cold plate will learn more about, I guess, once they're closer to being ready. And let's move on to this. So this is a $150 liquid cooler. They're calling it the X core series. Let me just double check really quick. Good news, not once does the word superconductor appear. So off to a good start. Uh, it's $150. The main kind of sales point here is that there's going to be swappable caps. So the plates are removable. Now underneath it, there's just a bunch of LEDs and an acrylic plate. This is a separately purchasable fan. And uh, you can see on the back here, there's a big piece of plastic. You might also notice a large piece of acrylic here. The question is, where ergo? And <laughs> there's these really tiny holes on the side. Um, currently, it's not really guided down. So I mean, if they want to make this work, there are ways to make this work. This isn't it. But uh, the way to do it would be cut much larger holes, first of all, and guide it. So this needs to have a way to actually shoot the air down at the VRM to actually cool the VRM in a meaningful way. Um, there's a little bit of a chamfered lip here at the edge. That's not going to be enough to push it into the VRM in a way that is relevant unless this thing is spinning at screeching RPMs. So not so sure about this. Uh, I, I saw it. I was just like, man, Arctic does this so much better. So they need to work on that. Um, also, the pricing, not 100% sure, but it sounds like the target is 40 to $60 which is, if that happens, literally insane. Uh, but otherwise, the, the range for all these is supposed to be in the same area. Now, uh, when I was given the price of 50 or 40 to 60 somewhere, the question was for all of them, right? And I, I think the answer is no. Uh, so anyway, let's move on to the fans. So the fans have an interlocking mechanism like everyone's kind of working on right now. It's a patent minefield. Um, you know, I'm not a lawyer, but I have read the patent, and my understanding of it is that Lee and Lee's patent specifically, which they're being aggressive about against Fantex and Thermaltake, if I remember correctly, uh, is that it needs to be power delivery on both sides, which they have here, but it also has to have LEDs, which they don't. And so for a, as, as far as I understand it, you can watch our video with a lawyer done to learn more, but in order to be a concern of a violation, you would have to hit all three of the categories that Lee and Lee declares, which is power on two sides, 
uh, LEDs, and then interconnecting mechanism. So it, this, I mean, I'm sure Cooler Mass is a big enough company. I'm sure they did their research. Uh, and also, they're probably a little scarier to sue than some of the other ones. But anyway, these lock together. Uh, there's magnets involved. We still don't know how magnets work. And it just connects to form another one of the sort of daisy chain fans, so to speak. Kit of three of them is going to be somewhere around $70. Um, so in other words, it's about 30% uh, more money to buy three completely separate 120 millimeter thicker fans than the functionless VRM fan that goes on top of the liquid cooler. So um, this thing I'm just going to throw out there really quickly. So this is a, a tech for, as in TEC, for phone cooling. It's supposed to strap to the back of a phone. The most realistic use case I can think of for this is people who are live streaming all the time. And this idea is free for anyone who wants to do this test, because I'm not going to do it. We don't test phones. But the best way to represent something like a cooling device on a phone, I think, if it's like this, where you can see the condensation, uh, is really going to be a battery life test, not a thermal test. Because the thermal testing is part of it. The answer at the end of it is, OK, it's 10 degrees cooler, so what? And in theory, every 10 degree reduction you have on the SOC should be around a 4% reduction in the power consumption, so volt leakage, basically. Uh, and so that should improve the battery life. So please take the idea. If you're a phone reviewer, have at it. Um, I'd love to see what the difference is, but we're not going to do that one. So anyway, that's it for what we're looking at for coolers and cases. There's some more stuff here. We're going to look at the master hub as well, which I'm actually super interested in. And that'll be in a separate piece. So as always, subscribe for more. We have a lot of stuff coming from Computex 2024. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you all next time.